Hi again, everyone. This is Scott Moore, and you're watching the one and only SMC Journal podcast, the show that's all about performance engineering and IT today. Thank you for joining us. A lot of you have asked me about LoadRunner, specifically using it in a CI CD pipeline. How do I get it working with Jenkins? We have some developers who want to run some API testing. They want to use LoadRunner because our enterprise testing group uses it as well. Um, we've got a new version of LoadRunner that's out uh, as of about a month or so ago. And I figured the best person to ask about this would be the product uh person for that, which is David McLeish. So I brought him onto the show. We're going to get right into that interview. Before we do, let's thank our sponsors for making this show possible. This episode is sponsored by Microfocus and the LoadRunner Solutions family. That includes LoadRunner Professional, Enterprise, Cloud, and Developer. You know, performance matters. Did you know that LoadRunner Solutions have the largest community of practitioners in the world? Join that community at community.microfocus.com, scan the QR code, and check out the LoadRunner family page on performance engineering, as well as their YouTube playlist that we've got links for in the show notes on smcjournal.com, as well as YouTube. This episode is sponsored by Supervisor. Stop losing money with a slow website. With Supervisor, you can continuously track the performance of your code and your hosting. Predict site page load speed with high user volumes and an easy one-click load test solution. Find out more at supervisor.com. This podcast is sponsored by Folk Consulting. They offer high-quality consulting services around application performance management and operational monitoring of system performance. Ryan Folk and his staff of highly experienced consultants can handle any of your needs around application delivery management, analytics, application performance testing, monitoring, and digital management. Find out more at folkconsulting.com. And with that, let's get right into our interview with David, where he discusses with me the new version of LoadRunner, specifically how you can shift test left using LoadRunner in a CI CD pipeline. Welcome back to the SMC Journal Podcast, David. Hey, Scott. Nice to be back. Well, I wanted to bring you on the show to talk specifically about how to use LoadRunner in a CI CD pipeline. I actually have had uh, quite a few emails about this saying, you know, we, we hear about this with other tools. You've talked about it with other tools. We want to know how uh, Microfocus officially what they say about using LoadRunner in a CI pipeline. And it shouldn't be any uh, surprise to any performance tester that LoadRunner support, fully supports it and has for, for a while. But I'd like for you to have the opportunity to talk about how you do that and what all is supported. Yeah, no, that that, that sounds grand. But yeah, because here at Microfocus, I mean, we have the entire suite of LoadRunner tools. All of the tools they support a continuous integration and continuous development ecosystem and for the last number of years we've been telling the story that you shouldn't test in isolation uh performance testing is a team sport uh it's now supported by multiple groups not just your traditional performance tester that really only tested the application under test and now with our support for all the observability platforms our introduction of our partnership with Gremlin. I mean, we can test and monitor the entire infrastructure. And we're telling the story that we want people to test early. Uh, performance testing shouldn't be a second class citizen. It should be put f uh, front and center of any sort of CI setup. Uh, you want to test early, automate it, set benchmarks, uh, and test more than the, the AUT. So all of our products, uh, the entire load runner suite, we all support. Um, all of the big uh, CID, CICD vendors, so Jenkins, Azure DevOps, Team City, Bamboo, all of those, uh, and we have plugins and, and native integrations uh, to all of those. Tell me about if you were having a conversation with a, a company where they obviously want to shift left. They've been doing performance testing, traditional performance testing for a while, but they, they've they started the process for shifting left and then the developer comes along and says, well, I've got tools that I develop my you know unit functional test with and, and those. So 
I don't want to. I don't want to use your Load Runner tool to do what I normally do in my native IDE. Um, yeah. How do you talk to that developer and say it's it's cool? We've got you covered. Yes. Yeah, so, so I mean, there's two parts to this. So, the first part is uh, we understand that companies uh, can grow non-organically and they consume other vendors or other uh, organizations that are maybe used to using a different testing tool. Uh, and that's what we we support the fact that you could come in with different types of tests, so Selenium, Gatlin, uh, JMeter. Uh, what we do is we add value on top of those. Uh, we know that we have superior reporting. Uh, we know we have uh, other better uh, execution engines. We we have our load runner analysis engine. So we give customers the ability to uh, reuse any assets that they have. Uh, that they have built up over the years, and then we apply all of the good stuff that LoadRunner can add on top of that. Better execution, the ability to scale because we can have then different load generators, uh, and also then you can come in and do the post uh, analysis. The other side of that is if they wanted to shift left and they didn't want to leave their IDE, I mean, we now have our newest product out and it's LoadRunner Developer, and the idea is that you embed a developer engine right into the heart of your IDE. So that is the shift left story. We And it's actually something I just mentioned a moment ago is performance is a team sport. We understand that uh, it's just not the traditional test. There's neither that are building and executing tests. It's the, the, the community on the left. It might be the analyst community on the right hand side. Uh, so what we do is we embed the load runner uh, engine into your IDE and we support all the major IDEs, and the idea is that it supports uh, local execution of up to 50 virtual users. So it's very similar to, to the community edition we have on professional and enterprise. Uh, and what you do is you, you record or you develop a script, and that gives you a dev web script, which is our one of our latest protocols and also our leanest protocol. And the idea is that you build it there, you make sure that it's working, uh, and then the, the developers hand that performance test off more to the traditional performance group. And we have a technology called ScaleRD, which basically allows you to execute that test that was started in an IDE environment. And you can run that at capacity and scale through your distributed environments. And that's going to be across all of the products, so professional, enterprise, or or on Load Runner Cloud. Um, so we want to satisfy our shift left community using IDE. And we are getting lots of customers now that are using that. Uh, and it's also, it, it's, it's it's available there as any part, any customer that, that's a load runner customer can make use of that. Uh, and it's a really simple uh, setup. In fact, you don't need any uh, installers, very little elevated privileges. You don't need to disable UAC or DAP like we usually do in all of our others. You basically unpack a zip file into your IDE, and then you have all of the load runner menus available there. You have a recorder. You can go in and correlate and script. Uh, and then when you're ready, you hand it off for, for the larger performance test. Awesome. Um, I'm sure that one of the most common uh, CICD pipeline engines is going to be Jenkins that people are going to want to yeah. try out. Now, you've got a plug-in for Jenkins for Loader. Can you talk a little bit about that and what you can do with it? Yeah, so it's it's pretty simple. We we supply a plugin. Uh, there's a number of versions there, and uh, anytime there is something that's missing, or we we do continue to add functionality to this. So you basically go to your Jenkins dashboard, uh, go to manage plugins. Uh, I can provide a link, uh, and you just go and you unpack that file and install that in. And then when you're actually going in to set up your your test, <clears throat> we give you a number of different options. There's an option just to execute a script from disk. So this is something that you just might have recorded uh, using ViewGen. Uh, but there's also other options where you can go in and take it from a scenario file. So you can have a larger performance test uh, that you know covers a certain amount of functionality. And that could have multiple scripts, not just native load runner. So you could have a controller open. You could add Selenium. Jamie, there are all the other stuff, unit tests that, that's going to cover your, your performance test. See if that is a scenario file, and then you can use that uh, as a pipeline job. Uh, we also support freestyle jobs where you can just go in and do uh, a quick uh, 
almost freestyle is almost like a sanity check to make sure it is working and then when you're comfortable with that uh you can then probably bake that into a larger scenario file and then execute it that way uh <clears throat> there is also other options i believe because we have a, a full restful api we have a command line engine so i'd imagine that people that are probably more familiar with with jenkins than i am i, I started out using the plugin because it takes me through all of the steps but if you if that was your job and you were a, a, a continuous integration engineer or developer i'm pretty certain you could you could have a myriad of different ways to trigger uh load runner tests I, and the good thing i wanted to mention as well uh if you are living in Jenkins, all of the good stuff that you get on LoadRunner uh, during the test, you can see that. We have the console output, uh, we have the overview report, we have the HTML reports, all of that gets brought back into the Jenkins dashboard. Uh, so you don't need to then make sure, ensure that other stakeholders or uh, CI, CI, CD engineers also have to have load runner on their machine they don't uh they can have it all back into that uh to that dashboard meaning again they don't have to leave the environment they're comfortable in having the good uh report and analysis at the end um that's the really the power of of that load runner brings to it that's pretty important because there are other products out there that they struggle creating some kind of a custom report or a trending report uh for people that are using Jenkins. I've seen that in the past. So that's, that's great. Um, yeah. I, just, I, I, just on that point, I, I was going to say that's a really good point because we base our pass and fail on SLAs. So you think about it, if uh, you were doing uh, any other automated testing or you were doing CICD on functional tests, as soon as one part of that functional test fails, that whole build is seen to fail. Uh, and we want to have that same mantra within our plugin from LoadRunner because because something passes uh, because it, it runs to the end doesn't mean that that won't introduce any failure or performance issues down the line. So this is where it's critical that we use the SLA. So you know that SLAs are our boundaries for performance. So we use those as in, uh, indicators back into Jenkins that shows that that could be passed uh, or satisfactory to push on to the next step. And maybe something is created or a build is deployed in, uh, into a, a different environment uh, in your organization. So it's critical that, that we don't only just say that, that the test run, it's critical that we actually say, no, here's the benchmarks that we set. We have a set of benchmarks and we're measuring our SLAs against that uh, because if you know as well as I do, if something goes out and there's a performance issue brewing as soon as that starts to be used in anger in your environment it's very likely going to go down or it's going to uh, degrade your your user experience i totally agree and it's not always cut and dry that a performance test is a pass or a fail it needs to be defined yeah. and, and that's sort of uh the issue that a lot of people come up with with running a test in the pipeline is it's always just assumed it's either pass or fail it's a one or a zero and it's it's not yeah. Um, so that's great. So just a gen general question, maybe that you've gotten feedback from your customers about when, when they start this journey to truly shift left, which we've been talking about for years, but when people actually do it, it's easier said than yeah. done. What yeah. you, what do you hear is the biggest challenge of shifting your performance testing left? I think it's probably getting all of the groups to actually, almost agree a standard of some sort uh, because we still see lists that things are done in silos. Someone says, oh, I'm functional, I just do the unit test. Or someone says, I just do the integration or I'm a sysadmin. Uh, and it seems to move through all the silos. Uh, but I think now that a lot of organizations are getting very more mature now and they're having this sort of end to end. And I think we see this trend now because uh, it is going to the far extreme uh, where we do have site reliability engineers. We have all of the observability platforms out there uh, and people aren't making these decisions looking at one single uh, yeah, performance be benchmark or whether a job run or, or passed or failed. It's actually going nigh up to the stakeholder level. Uh, and that's why we're sort of, as a company, we see that 
all of this comes together full end to end where maybe you do your uh, projections, your forecasting, your requirements, uh, and then you start doing performance tests and then you do builds and deployments. And that's why our company, we, if you've seen there, we've, we did a press release just uh, a few months back where we're, there's a new product on the market called Value Stream Management. And we're going to be plugging in performance there. We're plugging in functional uh, there. And we also have all of our products like PPM in there. We have Octane for, for lifecycle and quality management because we see that that's the way uh, the market is shifting. They are shifting to these. Everybody has to make decisions because it just can't be made in isolation. And I think that's the when we get buy-ins from organizations and stakeholders, even at sea level, then that's where we see that organizations are more likely to embrace all of these end to end and, and trying to trying to join the dots. You bring up a great point. I just finished this uh, video a couple of days ago about the, the five reasons why performance testing might suck in your organization. And <laughs> one of them is that the, when silos aren't truly broken down and you don't have good communication. And so you just mentioned that. And also uh, people not taking the business context into play when they think about why they're doing what they're doing, why they're creating a performance test or why they're scripting certain automated business processes to, to put their, their hat on that. Hey, what if I were, were the actual customer using this? How would I think? What would, how is it affecting them? And how does the business uh, think about this outside of it? They don't have a technical problem. It's more of a communication problem and a business context problem. So I think that th that's right on target with what I'm hearing as well. Yeah. And I mean, if you look at Microfocus as a business for, for years, we've always had great point products. They're really good at what they did. Some of these products, some customers did take one or two of these pro uh, products and sort of join the dots. Uh, now what we're doing is we're joining the dots across all of our products. Uh, so right from, from the early days when you're doing requirements management, uh, we're from when you're doing project and portfolio planning, uh, and what the idea is, you have a layer of knowledge and AI that sits between all of these, and they know what happens in a performance test or of a functional test fields. They know and project what can actually happen down the line, that there could be revenue lost on this, or this project that's due to be completed by this date could slip because there's performance test uh, failures. And, and we're joining that that's not only across our own products, uh, but also because we have the Microfocus Connect technology that can say, if you have requirements or something that's living in version one or something like that, uh, <clears throat> or Jira, we can take those defects in, we can still give you the cross product visibility on that. And the idea is that, as you say, all of these decisions are sort of moving up different layers. It's sort of the uh, the safe standard where we have different people at different le levels. So we're trying to make sure that we have dashboards that can re report right down into each individual layer, but also uh, surface all of this data up so that stakeholders and executive sponsors and even C-level employees can come in at any point in time and see what's going in going on within their software development. I'm glad to hear that's where you're going with, with connecting the product line. And what is the latest version of Loadrunner that was released? So the last release was the 2021, or sorry, 2022 R1. Uh, that went live on 28th of June. Right. Uh, so not too far back. Uh, so we're just, we're actually, actually just now a couple of cycles in. We have a winter release planned. Uh, date's still a little bit fluid. Uh, but we do plan to get a winter release out, uh, and then we will probably do the same flow. So we will probably go with uh, a major, which will be 2023. That'll be sometime in the spring of next year. Uh, and then we'll just go through our normal motions. It'll be R1, hopefully summer release, and the R2. Uh, and in fact, we already have a sort of three-year projection about the technologies we're going to embrace, how we're going to, to get ahead of market trends, uh, and, we'll, and we have a, a fairly static roadmap, but we understand that, that things come into the market and change. And that's probably why on the last release, uh, just a, a six weeks or so ago, that we put Prometheus in there. We had other vendors in, but we'd seen that Prometheus uh, was starting to get a lot of adoption. It was getting adopted because of also probably 
the rise of Kafka, and it sits very nice on top of monitoring Kafka containers. Uh, so that's why we sort of rejigged that um, to the market. And also, we're listening to our customers. Uh, I mean, anybody for the for the last couple of years uh, has seen that we run virtual uh, meetups. Uh, we run our universe sessions where, where people can come and, and listen to Roadmap, interact with the entire product team. Uh, but also, we have a public uh, idea exchange. And that's to hold us accountable uh, and also for us to actually measure what our customers want because I don't want to put something in my product uh, that only gives value to one customer. I mean, if they really, really need it and we think it's a great addition, we will add it in. But we want to put stuff there and we want to see what customers vote on. So as a group, our entire performance team, we meet every two weeks and we actually look at every new idea exchange that comes in uh, we filter that through into our own uh, Octane backlogs, and then we seed and groom, and we move the priority in the ranking. But we also change the status on that, so customers on the idea exchange can say, now see that that idea is accepted, uh, or we've planned it into a release. Or most of the new things, they actually uh, we change them to uh, waiting for votes, and that way, if people think that that's a great value to them, even though they didn't log that, then we're hoping that they upvote that. And then that helps us sort of do our own internal prior prioritization. So you mentioned a, a Prometheus monitor, which I'm, I'm excited to talk about that. And so we're going to have a, a, another podcast for everybody that's just about this Prometheus monitor and other uh, new monitoring capabilities that are coming out with load earners. So stay tuned for that podcast next. Uh, so, uh, you've got a video or you've got a demo for us that yeah. you're going to be sharing that walks people through what, uh, the, the CI pipeline with Jenkins. Yeah. So really what I'll do is I'll show you how to go and get the plugin. Uh, I'll show you how to go in, uh, and set that in your own local Jenkins or, or your organization. In fact, I just installed Jenkins myself. It's so easy to install, got the plugin. And with that plugin, there's a couple of different options. There's the ability uh, to run a freestyle job, uh, which I did set up on, in the first instance just to make sure that I could uh, trigger uh, my script. But then we have the ability to add that uh, as a pipeline. And, and with pipelines, you obviously you get more power there because you can take in unit tests or you can trigger things in Octane. Uh, and also you'll trigger your uh, load runner scenario. Uh, and I can show that. I can show what happens when that's running. I can show you the console output. I can show you how it builds up a trend history about jobs that passed, ones that failed. But more importantly, also how we get the data back and what it looks like. Uh, and then obviously you can then use that uh, to, to make your decisions in Jenkins if you like. Or we still have the ability to download those zip files and put them into load runner analysis. And we know there you have more power because you can dig a little bit deeper and you can merge graphs and overlay counters and things like that. So it probably only takes 10 minutes and I'm happy to run through that. Okay, awesome. So let's go ahead and we'll we'll share that video now. You come to your Jenkins, go to manage plugins. You can do a search if you don't already have it installed and you'll find that we have a plugin here uh, that, that offers the integration into LoadRunner uh, and LoadRunner Enterprise. And this just gives you some of the details and the ability to download uh, some of the latest versions. So you see here, it's up to 7.4.3. Uh, but if we just go back into Jenkins, I already have this installed. And it's just, just as simple as downloading that, browsing to disk and installing that. But uh, if you have a look at mine, yeah, I, I have 7.2 uh, running uh, on mine, whereas I could update this to the latest. Uh, but I can continue running and it's doing what I need. Uh, <clears throat> when you come back to your dashboard, uh, I already set one up. I just set a freestyle test up and I just wanted to see uh, and show you what that looks like. As you see here, I've had already a number of successful runs, uh, but you basically set this up and I'll just, uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna run one just to show you what it actually looks like. and. Uh, that is when this is running we can go into that uh and we can have a look at the console output uh and you've seen there that it's already uh, successfully 
went uh, and read from my scripts. So it's went to my ViewGen uh, directory, and I have a, a script in here called Web Single URL. It's passed some additional parameters in, and I'll show you where it, it reads those from. And then it goes about, runs the job, and takes the, the data back. Uh, so if I go back to that project, we can see that has been successful. Uh, if I click on uh, any of those results, we can go in uh, and you'll see here's all the results files that, that we generated. Uh, we can actually have a look at the ViewGen report. Uh, pretty basic, but as I say, this is a simple test that I run with a, a single uh, URL going to microfocus.com. If I go back into project, uh, and have a look at configure. Uh, the important thing is you go into build environment, uh, and this is where we where the plugin adds the additional parameter so that it knows that it's a, a load runner test that it needs to do. Uh, so you see here, you can simply just go and browse uh, to that script that is on my directory, and I can go and load that uh, and execute that uh, through the normal controller. Uh, and there's also some other post build operations that we can go in and have a look at and, and you can set different parameters here. Uh, so I just go back out, back to freestyle. Uh, you see here it does collect uh, all of the files that can then be used to report on. You can also have a look at uh, additional build history and you can download uh, anything else from that. Uh, there is also the ability uh, to run more advanced tests uh, and you see here any last tests that were run uh, it actually creates and uh, generates all of the reports that it needs to, to show bring back into the console so you don't need to actually leave Jenkins uh, so if we have a look at this we can download this zip file and we can extract that uh, you'll see the type of data that we're, we're generating. So again, it's the same sort of data you would get if you were to execute this uh, from your controller. Uh, again, it's the standard HTML reports. Uh, again, here we go. It shows you that uh, <clears throat> we run that test today. Uh, really simple test, one user uh, collecting the normal metrics uh, and collecting all of the other stuff that you would see uh, on your normal test execution, and this is the sort of HTML report that you're able to generate from within LoadRunner itself. Uh, on, on setting this up and configuring this, we have a great section actually on our ADM Help Center. Uh, if you just go to the ADM Help Center or admhelp.microfocus.com, uh, this is where all our help centers for ADM are hosted. And just do a quick search for, for Jenkins. It'll tell you where to go and get the plugin. It'll tell you how to uh, do the setup on this and a lot of other things. Okay, so David, thank you for sharing that demo with us. Um, I did have a question from the last time that you were on. Uh, we were talking about this Gremlin integration, and several people yeah. asked, well, when is that integration going to be in the other LoadRunner family products? And you want to you want to talk about that as far as Gremlin, but also just in general, how how it, something gets released and how it gets moved into the various product line? Yeah, uh, and, and that is a good point. So we did do a partnership with Gremlin, and it's going really well. Those guys are uh, a great a great bunch of people. They're very uh, receptive to uh, our LoadRunner customers. We've been doing lots of demos, uh, starting it out in, in LoadRunner Professional because that was our first integration point. Uh, but we, we've been talking to lots of LoadRunner Enterprise customers because uh, chaos testing is probably more suited to that persona because it's probably a more mature organization. It's maybe an organization uh, with, the, with an entire ecosystem that they need to test end to end, uh, and also that the Lodron Enterprise is it's a global platform uh, more than just focusing on project based teams. Uh, so what we do is we released it with Lodron 2022, uh, and we had a tech preview before that just with a few customers, just making sure that we were happy. And really, it was phase one uh, where we released it as a beta. Uh, and then on the last release, 
we actually released it as general availability because anything that's in that we will support if customers have queries or if they have issues uh, and anybody on the last release will see that this is uh, it's, there's been much more added we've added new overlays color coded charts to show when a chaos event starts and stops we've did a check back into the gremlin interface to make sure that you are designing a scenario that's longer uh, than the chaos event that you'd set up on the gremlin side uh, and we've improved a lot of our charting uh, and, and markers that we were added uh, and what actually happened is we do the integration in load on professional uh, it's our simplest product when you look at the other two products uh, it's a desktop application it has three parts <laughs> you know it has ViewGen for recording and scripting it has a controller for execution uh, and then you really and then you have load runner analysis so that's a really simple ecosystem so that's why most of our integrations for example gremlin for example prometheus they start out there and we get them to the market faster uh, and while that's happening and while we're uh, getting customer feedback the embedding efforts have already started in the other two products. So it will have started in enterprise and it will have started in cloud. Because if you think of enterprise, it's a much broader uh, application. There's a database, there's listeners to go in and out of uh, firewalls. There's a whole application layer. Uh, so it's a little bit more harder for us to embed things in there. It takes a little bit more time. So to ensure that we can come to the market quickly and get an integration point, we usually start out uh, in Load Runner Professional. That's the team that builds the service. So what we do is we'll have built this integration uh, and it means that the other two groups, they don't need to rebuild that. They just consume that service and they'll fit that into their UI or uh, they will fit it in, uh, in it to execute in a slightly different fashion because we know that uh, on professional, you physically have the controller, but we know all of this is done in the UI and enterprise. So there's a couple of little tweaks to consume that service. And also, uh, Load Runner Professional, it's our grandfather product. It's the one where we have the most users. It's our entry point into the market. Uh, so it gets it out there and, and really gets it used in anger. Uh, and I really want to put the call out, now that it is GA, I'd love customers to come and tell me what they think of it. Is there things missing? Because when we look at it, it's phase one almost. And we have lots of development cycles where we will, will put effort into this because we see uh, that even Gartner's reporting that in the next couple of years, everybody's going to have a chaos practice in their DevOps model. Uh, the state of IT report has also said that the chaos is increasing and, and the fact that people are moving away from testing and production and trying to test in non-production, but also to simulate those production type of events. So we really see this as something that that, that is uh, a burning factor in the market. And I would love our customers to come and tell us what they like a Gremlin, maybe the results they're getting in Gremlin. Do they want us to take those across and display them in, in our online charts? Do they want them displayed in the load runner analysis results files? Uh, really a, a call to arms. If anybody would like to have a conversation with me, uh, I'd really like that. But for our plans later in the year, we are planning to have a winter release. And we're hoping that anything that's come out integration wise, uh, that we'll consume those services in. And, and we will follow the flow with that. Any new APM that we release, usually it'll come out first in professional and then we'll consume an enterprise and cloud. Are there any other things you want to mention about the newest version of LoadRunner or just in general, what, what may be happening with MicroFocus or what you're hearing? Uh, I mean, the new version, it, it, there's there's a lot of good features right across uh, right across the, the entire product suite. I mean, if we look at Professional, we've tightened up our Azure, uh, our Azure key store. So now we can do, we can exchange secrets using uh, the Azure Vault, which means that People don't need to think that they have to have something in the script because that's a security vulnerability. They can now just do the uh, private exchange with Azure Key Vault. So that's another one that we really, that we listen to our customers. We've seen lots of people asked about that. They don't want things stored in scripts. They want us to do vault integrations. And that's probably something we will probably do more of because Azure isn't the only one that does that. We also know that uh, I think it's called KMS, which is the new one that Azure Web Services uses. So there's been a couple of requests. So probably stay tuned on that point because it is something that we will look to consume. Uh, 
in professional, we've also redid our charting technology. So on the online charts, if you run a test, you will see that they're much more brighter. You can zoom, you can scroll. There's different ways to interact with those. And that gives us a great foundation to actually build more and more uh, as we go forward into the next releases. Uh, if you look at enterprise, we've really focused on, on the end user experience. Uh, we've tightened up all of our menus. We've cleaned up all of our interfaces. We've given more administrative features into that. And the same with cloud. We're expanding our regions on cloud. We're redoing most of the UI there. So you will see that uh, our UIs are getting much more cleaner and closer together. Uh, and anything that was missing on cloud protocol wise, we're making sure that we're making sure that we, we have those to, to give customers. Because if you've seen the micro focus push recently, we know that customers are wanting to adopt uh, a SaaS model. They, we see this from lots of customers. The entire market sees that people are moving, probably not as quick as we would like, but they're moving from uh, on-premise into SaaS. So we wanna make sure that any native SaaS solution we have that'll satisfy that requirements. In fact, we have a whole new team now uh, just to do migrations to move our customers, be that from ALM uh, Quality Center into Octane or Old Performance Center into new Load Runner Enterprise. Uh, and also uh, we're going into, we have a partnership with AWS. We have lots of new data centers open there. Uh, and really, that's where you'll see a lot of our focus uh, going forward. But we understand that customers may have years and years of assets that they've built up uh, on premise. So we want to make sure that we don't leave all of that behind. Uh, so we got to make sure that we have a way to lift and shift that and then reuse that. Uh, but we also understand that customers, just given the industry they're in or their own regulations and audits, they can't maybe move as quickly to go to cloud. So we will still be investing into Load Runner Professional. We still will be investing into Load Runner Enterprise, the on-premise uh, platform. Uh, but at the same time, we'll probably be innovating and putting stuff in SaaS that, that maybe customers can connect to and use as a, as a, as a paid for service, or maybe just as a value add that, that, that we'll give away. Uh, so the development at the moment that we are making sure that we're, that we're splitting it both ways to make sure customers on premise and, and cloud get the best of both. It's actually, it's really exciting to hear of all the progress that's being made and all the work that's being done across the product line. So thank, this has been a great update, I'm sure for micro focus customers and, and possibly new customers as well to know what's going on, what's the latest. So David, thanks so much for being on the program today and we'll have you back on very soon to talk about those Prometheus monitor and the other monitoring capabilities. Okay. More than happy. Thanks for the invite, Scott. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Well, we will definitely have David back to talk about the new monitoring capabilities in Load Runner Professional. I'm specifically interested myself in the Prometheus integration. So make sure that you check back with us when we air that. If you have feedback for me on the show, it's very easy to reach me. You can contact me through my website at scottmore.consulting. You can also reach me through LinkedIn or Twitter. There are the links and the URL there. You can also reach me by email at help at scottmore.consulting. And if you like this show, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you'll be notified of all the new episodes that come out, not only of this SMC Journal podcast, but the performance tour as well. Till next time, this is Scott Moore for the SMC Journal Podcast saying thanks for watching and bye-bye.